how did it all begin? What's it all made of? Are we alone? And when you're on the bleeding frontier of science, you don't always know if the question you ask is even valid. Scientists want answers too, but we are completely content steeped in ignorance because it's the ignorance that attracts us. It's the journey to that frontier, not the answers. As the area of our knowledge grows, so too does the perimeter of our ignorance. Because you know more of what you don't know. That's what it is. And here's the problem. It's knowing enough to think you're right, but not enough to know that you're wrong. You learn a little bit about something and you say, I got this. Well, maybe you don't, but you don't know enough to know that you don't. You have to learn more to realize you actually didn't know. Our senses, our five traditional senses, were forged sort of in the plains of Africa, where there is no need to think about, know, or understand infinity. We have no capacity for that. It's our mathematics that shows us that it's real. It's our observations of the universe that show the infinitude of it all. So the, the great challenge for us all, to repeat the phrase, is knowing enough to think you're right, but not knowing enough to know that you're wrong. And that gets a lot of people in trouble because they, they rise up thinking they got the answers. But our job is to hack our way to the frontier, that boundary between what is known and unknown in the universe. And when you stand there and look out into the abyss, you can't fear that. It has to attract you. We celebrate not knowing. A religious person might ask me, so how'd the universe get here? Well, we got the Big Bang. And then they'll say, well, what was around before the Big Bang? And I'll say, I don't know. But they'll say, there had to be something. I said, I don't know. Maybe there was nothing. I don't know. We're working on it. There had to be something. That's God. Right? So they got the answer. So people ask, what is the question you want to see most answered? And yeah, I've got, there's some, we don't know what dark matter is and dark energy and how you go from organic molecules to self-replicating life. I got a list of questions, mm -hmm. but that's not what keeps me awake at night. Mm -hmm. It's the question I don't yet know to ask right. because we don't yet stand in the vista that allows me to see that question in the first place. It's the continual parade of discoveries that don't simply move, move forward, but they ascend to give you higher and higher ground to see farther into the universe and recognize things that you didn't even know to ask. Not enough of us spend time celebrating the fact that we were alive at all. There's been about 100 billion people who have ever lived. Do you know how many people can exist? You take a look at the genes, find out how many combinations of genes can make an authentic human being. And you do that, you can do the math on this. And it is stupendously larger number than the 100 billion. I give a low end number of a million trillion trillion total possible numbers of plausible human beings that could exist. What it means is you are alive against stupendous odds. You are breathing air, observing sunsets, gazing into the night sky. Most humans who could ever exist, never will. And so the fact that you exist at all is against stupefying odds of who gets born and who does not. Realizing this, you are you, I am me. We are alive. We get to die. And to get to die means you get to live. And you're gonna complain about the life you have? Yes, not all lives are equally, I get that. Yes. And, and you could get the wrong hand dealt to you, either birth defects or, or your family, whatever it is, that's what you've got. Any moment you spend squandering those moments you are alive, 
does disrespect to all those who will never even be born. So every day I wake up, I want to make the world a better place today for my having been in this world than it was yesterday. I want to learn something new, which empowers me to make decisions that are more nuanced, deeper, more informed than I could have made yesterday. I want to celebrate being alive. Even if you are sick, even if you are terminal, you still got to live when trillions of people would never even be born. So live every one of those moments. Do all you can within your power and the power of others who love you to maximize what you can be, what you can think, what you, you can learn, how you can love. You are as special a living entity as there ever was. And if you got one time on earth, there it is.